Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 32 for the 5% series. That is, if you follow these instructions, only pick players from this pool, you'll probably do alright, finish the top 5% globally, which means you'll do alright in your mini leagues. You won't get a massively great score probably, so you're not going to win your mini leagues, but you'll do alright, it'd be respectable. So Game Week 31 hasn't yet finished. So for the players that are in this system, we don't yet know the scores for Chelsea, Man United and Liverpool players. So the advice I'm giving you, because it's before the games, try and be aware of any injuries or suspensions that may come up, but they should be indicated on the website itself. Now, assuming that you played the wildcard in game week 30, and I think most of us did, you may well not need to make any transfers this week. But if you've got two free transfers, there's probably something you can do but don't do something for the sake of it. If you've got 15 good players and you're happy with it, you just let a transfer go. If you've got one free transfer, use it if you want to, but if you want to let it roll for next week, that's all right as well. So we'll start by looking at the score so far for game week 31. For the goalkeepers, Neto 7, Raya 5. That's all, but Anana's not yet played. For the cheaper keepers, Pickford 3. And that's all. But Petrovic and Keller haven't yet played. For the defenders, the expensive defenders, the three Arsenal boys got a clean sheet. And that's all. For the cheaper defenders, Aiton Nore got a return again. That's nice. And that's all of those that have played so far. For the midfielders, Foden got a hat-trick last night, which was nice, 20 points. If you don't have Foden, don't feel too bad about it. On the FPL Game Week website, you can see the Content Creators League. And they've got 70 odd content creators in there. 14 of them sold Foden this week. And I know some of them were recommending to people watching their videos. It's okay to sell Foden if it helps you get in Salah. Now if Salah outscores Foden. Maybe that was an alright move. But it would have been better to have Foden and Salah. Odegaard 11. And that's all. But of course Salah, Fernandes and Luis Diaz haven't yet played. Saka was rested last night. We don't think he's particularly injured. For the cheaper midfielders, Havertz 5, Barnes 5, the rest nothing. But Palmer and Garnacho haven't yet played. For the strikers, Isaac 8. Haaland stayed on the bench. That probably means he's going to play at the weekend and probably get a lot of points. Watkins was injured. We don't know if he's back for the weekend yet. Darwin's not yet played. For the cheaper forwards, they did nothing, those that have played. We're now going to look at the players that are in the system for game week 32. So Vicario, he's all right. Home to Forest may get a clean sheet, but it is Tottenham. They do manage to leak goals sometimes. But he blanks in game week 34, so if you haven't got him, you don't buy him. But if you have got him, he's a perfectly okay keeper to have. Ray is probably the best keeper in the system at the moment. Onana's all right. Leno's all right. Neto's all right. Neto does have a double in 34, but it's not a great double. Regarding the cheaper keepers, Petrovic's okay and he doubles in 36 and 37. We don't know for sure he's going to be first choice and get all the games, but he's okay. Pickford, so I've made him green. I think over the next three game weeks, he may well be the highest scoring keeper in the system. So he's home to Burnley this week and then he's got two home games in the double, albeit one of them is against Liverpool. So I think he's pretty good. If you had nothing else to do and you had two free transfers and you had, for example, Ariola who's injured, you could get in Pickford. But if you've only got one free transfer, I wouldn't bother getting in Pickford. But I think he's a good choice. Dubravka, so he's gone up a bit in how good he is because Pope is now confirmed out for the rest of the season. So when we wildcarded two game weeks ago, we were saying, if you get in Dubravka, just be aware he's not going to be playing in the double like he'd be game week 37. But now he probably is going to be playing in the double if he doesn't get injured. So suddenly he's a slightly better choice. Ariola's injured at the time of recording. We don't know how long he's out for. Kelleher, good keeper, chance of clean sheets, but Allison will be back at some time, probably. Will it be by game week 34? Don't know. So for the defenders, Trippier, good attacking player, defensively not great, Newcastle are awful defensively. When we wildcarded in game week 30, the expectation was Trippier may play, because he's a little bit injured, and by the end of the season, when they're going to have a double game week and nice easy fixtures, Pope should be back. 
so he's got a chance at clean sheets as well as attacking returns. But now that Pope's not going to be back, the clean sheet chances are massively diminished. And if he's not playing, he's not going to get any attacking returns. So if you've got Trippier and you've got nothing else to do or you just want to, you can sell him for somebody else. But don't feel like you have to. I've got Trippier. I'm probably not going to sell him, but it's not definite. Virgil van Dijk, the safest Liverpool defender as far as minutes are concerned. So he's got a good chance of getting 90 minutes every game week and he doubles in game week 34. So if you wanted to move Trippier to Virgil van Dijk, that's fine. But you may rather move Trippier to a much cheaper defender, which is going to free up funds to use elsewhere in your squad. Porro's got some attacking potential, but he blanks in game week 34, so don't buy Porro at the moment. Any of the Arsenal defenders are worth having, so there's Saliba and there's White. Chilwell, he didn't play last game because he's injured, but Chelsea should be having two doubles in 36 and 37, probably. Gabriel, he's perfectly good Arsenal defender. For the cheaper defenders, Udogi, like Porro, he's got a blank in 34, so if you've got him, that's okay, but don't buy him now. Aiton Nore, he's nice and cheap and he's very attacking. So if you did Trippier to Aiton Nore, it's going to free up 2 million. And Aiton Nore over the next three game weeks is almost certainly going to score more than Trippier. Bradley, exceptionally good defender. Very, very good. But when Trent is back fit, Bradley's probably going to get fewer minutes or maybe even no minutes. The current expectation is he certainly won't get two games in game week 34. He may not get any time in game week 34. So if you've got him, brilliant play him all the time he's playing if you buy him now that's okay but it's a bit of a gamble because you're probably gonna have to move him on and it means if you've got him you may need to sell him for 34 if you're going to want to have three Liverpool players in game week 34 and you probably want ideally three Liverpool and three Arsenal in game week 34 because they're doubles Gusto is a good attacking player but he might be injured this is being recorded before the Chelsea game so I don't know if he's going to play tonight or not. Branthway, I've made him green because he's cheap and he's got three nice fixes in the next three game weeks and Chelsea. But for 4.2 million, if he helps you out, he's fine to have and you'll be playing him in game week 34 if you've got him. Lascelles is now injured for the rest of the season. If you've got him, it's worth getting rid of him. Because of rotation of players, because... There's a lot of games to play. We're near the end of the season. It really is worth having 15 players that are playing or have a good potential of playing if you can. There's no point having a player that we know is not going to play. We know Lascelles is not going to play. Whereas the likes of Watkins and Trippier and Gusto, every week it's like, oh, they might play. They might be back and, oh, no, maybe they're not. That's not as bad as a banker that's not playing. For the midfielders, Salah is worth having good player. Son, I've marked him as sellable. If it's going to help make your squad a lot better, you can sell him. He's a very, very good player. He's absolutely worth having. But he's not worth having if it means you're going to have four or five duff players in your team because of the money that's tied up in Son. He blanks in 34. Uh, some managers are free hitting in 34. If you've been following the system, you'll not be free hitting 34 because you've used it. Uh, and he's fine to put on your bench, but he is a fair bit of money. Saka is a good player. Odegaard's a good player. Fernandez, I like him. I think he's a good player. Foden's clearly a good player. Madison's a good player, but he blanks in game week 34, so don't buy Madison now. Luis Diaz, he's got a double. So on this page, Salah, Saka, Odegaard, Luis Diaz, they all have doubles in 34. Any of those are worth buying. And over the next three game weeks, I'd rather have anyone on this page actually to Sun. <laughs> But it not it wouldn't be worth taking a minus four to move Sun to any of these players. For the cheaper midfielders, I like Havertz. He's a good attacking player. Richarlison's a good player, but Blanks in 34, so don't buy Richarlison now. Barnes is good. Palmer's a very good player. Absolutely should be in your squad. Rice is nice and cheap, and we'll probably get some attacking returns between now and the end of the season. But Havertz, Saka and Odegaard will probably outscore Rice. Garnaccio is a good player from game week 34 or sometime afterwards. He might be worth bringing in. If you've got him now, that's fine as well. Gordon's a good player. Gordon 4.5. I think I've got Gordon's price wrong. I don't think he's 4.5. I 
Haaland, he got rested last night. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next four game weeks he gets goals every week. Palace, Luton, Brighton, Forest, he's going to be hungry for goals. He's worth having. Personally, I wouldn't take hits. I wouldn't take a minus four or minus eight to bring him in. But he's clearly generally a good player. I'd expect him to get at least a couple of double digit returns between now and the end of the season. Watkins, so after the next three game weeks, he's going to be worth selling. He's a lot of money. The fixtures aren't great. He's not doubling. He didn't play last night. And if we find out he's injured for this coming weekend at home to Brentford, then he's absolutely fine to sell. But you could sell him anyway if you want to and free up some money to do something else. Isaac's a good player. Darwin's a good player. And he doubles in 34. Cheaper forwards. Solanke's got some nice fixtures coming up and he doubles in 34. Hoyland's a good player, but probably from 34 or afterwards. Jackson's a good player, but he's a dodgy geezer on nine yellows. He could miss a couple of games soon. So Kuna's home to West Ham, then away to Forest, and he's got a double game week. He's absolutely worth having if you can afford to get him in transfer-wise. So if you had Watkins and you found out Watkins definitely isn't playing, you can just move him to Kuna. You'll free up some money and you've got some nice fixtures coming up. And Munez, he's nice and cheap and he does get some decent attacking returns. So we're now going to look at the bench. You've got 15 players in your squad. If we get the bench order right, the other 11 obviously choose themselves. I'm going to make suggestions. If you blindly follow what I do over the course of the season, you'll probably do all right. If you disagree with what I'm saying or you want to do something else, that's absolutely fine. This is just my suggestions. So the first player I show you that you've got regarding the goalkeepers, I suggest you put on your bench. So if you've got Ariola, he's not even playing, so obviously he's on your bench. And the next year I think aren't going to keep clean sheets. And in order of how much I would be benching them, it's Dubravka, Kelleher, Neto, Leno, Onana. Petrovic has a chance of a clean sheet, but it's Chelsea. Vicario's got a chance of a clean sheet, but it's Tottenham. Pickford, I think, is currently the bookie's favourite to keep a clean sheet. However, I've made Raya the number one choice. So I'm suggesting if you've got Raya and Pickford, you should probably play Raya, but you don't have to. Reason being, although Pickford, so Everton at home to Burnley, should have more chance of a clean sheet than Arsenal away to Brighton, Everton can make silly mistakes a lot more likely than Arsenal are. So that's the keepers. Regarding the other players, the first player I show you that you've got, I suggest is position three in your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. And because we've only got a smallest number of players in this system, there's a good chance you're going to be benching some good players. So I'm suggesting Branthwaite's on your bench, then Chilwell, Rice, Gusto, Barnes, Garnacho, Richarlison, Gordon, Trippier, Udogi, Porro, Luis Diaz, Havertz, Jackson, Fernandez, Madison, Solanke, Virgil van Dijk, Hoyland, Bradley, Munez, Kuna, Aitnore, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Odegaard, Darwin, Isaac, Watkins, Saka, Foden, Palmer, Sun, Haaland, Salah. Now, obviously, because this is everyone in the system, Salah is going to play if you've got him, as will Haaland, as will Sun, Palmer, Foden, Saka and Watkins. If you've got any of those seven, they will be playing for you this week. So it is possible if you could afford it and you had the top, the first eight players, I'm suggesting it's Isaac that's on your bench. But there's a chance that Watkins won't play because he's injured, in which case Isaac could come on anyway. If you're wondering why Branthwaite is last, even though I was saying Everton got a good chance of a clean sheet, there's also a good chance everything's going to mess up and not get anything. And the other players, I feel, have got a certain amount of attacking potential on them. Regarding captaincy, I think there's a fair bit of choice this game week and there's not a massive, obvious captaincy choice. So I think Salah is a perfectly reasonable, good choice for captain. I know they're away to Man United, but Man United aren't great. They're okay, they have fun, but defensively they're really not great, so he's got a decent chance of getting something there. Haaland, again, away, he could well get a couple of goals. Sun, at home, could get some good points. Palmer is away, but it's an easy fixture, so he could get something nice. Foden, obviously, is doing very well at the moment. And I've got Watkins on here. If Watkins is fit, 
and playing 90 minutes, he would be my first choice probably at home to Brentford. If he's flagged in a doubt, you probably don't want to put the captaincy on him just in case he just plays 30 minutes off the bench. But if he's not flagged and firm playing, I think Watkins is quite a nice choice. Any of those are fine. I'd suggest if you can make one of these captain, one of these vice captain. Personally, I wouldn't pick the two Man City players though because a very remote chance the game gets postponed or abandoned and then you've lost your captain and your vice captain. If you can't get two of these, then probably any of the attacking players you've got is fine to use because you've only got good players in the system. Regarding the background picture this week, today's April the 4th and it's Robert Downey Jr.'s birthday. So I thought, let's have a picture of him. And there we have it. That's suggestions for game week 32, which starts in a couple of days' time. This is Thursday just now. No, please, the game week starts on Saturday. Thank you very much for watching. I will try and make sure I answer any questions you've got specific to your team or just general comments. Thanks. Bye.